Hey everybody, welcome to the P6 Toolbox project. Uh, the next couple of days we're going to be building one of these. So this is the base for uh, your, your basic AME M quarter drive and extensions and uh, uh, wrenches toolbox. And so um, once you give me all your paperwork showing that you know exactly the dimensioning of the size, the TDW and TDL, I'll give you a, a fairly little bit oversized sheet. You're going to uh, mark it to the correct dimensions and then you're going to cut it in the shear. Once you get it in the out of the shear and we're um, the proper size, we're going to get you to lay out really everything on this. So you can see here I'm laying out the uh, bend tangent lines or the bend allowance. And we're going to need that because we're going to have uh, stuff where we're actually going to be using those dimensions. And then I'm going to follow it up with the sight lines. Once I'm finished that, I'm going to pilot drill at the intersection of the sight line each one of those holes. And we're going to use a weird thing called a rota brooch, which is the tool right there. It's got a spring-loaded centering punch on it. So we push down, and it actually doesn't drill through the holes as, it, as much as it just cuts a circle around the outside. Once we get that done, we're going to trim along the long edge, edges. Make sure it's the long edges. Uh, we're going to trim out those little bits for where our flanges are going to be that are going to roll into our uh, toolbox. Of course, once we get that done, we're almost ready to bend. So most important, we're going to round all the corners, deburr all the edges, uh, both inside and outside, to make sure that uh, we've got nothing sharp on it and that it meets you know, standard aviation practices. When we bend it, we're actually going to joggle the material. And so what we're going to need to do is put a shim in where we're bending and so you can see i've just put some long shims in there on the long uh, center section i got some short pieces that i'm going to put on the back side right in where we're going to bend and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the material to joggle so that the little fingers fit happily inside the long uh, sides now we're going to make sure we got some serious setback because we've got some pretty thick material here and we're going to put our our uh, box now into the cornice break we're going to line it up perfectly on those sight lines. Make sure that the sight lines are dead on because that will make a huge difference in the sides of your box and we want to keep the dimensions right. We're going to bend it up a good solid 90 degrees plus probably about 10, a little bit maybe more than 10%. Make sure it's nice and square and looks good. We're going to pull that piece out and we are going to flip her around and do exactly the same thing again, making sure our sight lines are exactly where they should be. Clamp it down bend it up okay and again make sure that thing is sitting nice and square end to end and looks good next thing we're going to do of course once we get back to our table pull off all the shims because we don't need them anymore and what it's going to give us are the little end pieces are ever so slightly deeper you can see there than uh, the long stretches and so what we want to do is we want to make sure those little end pieces are square because they go around a smaller radius they sometimes get bent in a little bit more so we want to make sure by hand that we square them up. The next thing we're going to want to do is take the plastic out where those end pieces are going to slide over the metal because if we don't take that plastic out we're going to end up with it being trapped in there. We don't want to do that so peel that back before we walk over and work on our box and pan break. Again, position it perfectly with the uh, sight line lined up. Bend it a good solid 90 degrees so those ends are properly fitted inside and it should look really good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out our repair. So you can see here, uh, uh, mark it up on the top right hand corner of your box when you flip it upside down. And we're going to measure in a specific edge distance, both from the end and the side, matching exactly where the uh, drawing calls for us to. Uh, put our pilot holes um, and we want to make sure that this thing sits square and uh, with equal edge all the way along the side of the box. Okay and so again I'm making sure here that I've got my second hole where I'm going to cut exactly lined up. Yep perfect there and now I'm going to pilot drill it with a number 40 making sure it's going exactly where I want it. Then what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, the unibit. The unibit is going to help us to get the hole the size that we want. And what we need to do is we need to fit that unibit uh, or drill it in deep enough to allow our chassis punch to actually fit inside the hole. You can see here it takes me a couple of tries to get it exactly, but I don't want to oversize it or it won't sit tight and it won't be positioned properly. Again, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Yep, bringing it up to size. There we go. She's going to fit. And then I'm headed over to the 55 ton press. We're going to use this to actually use our large chassis punch. You can see, make sure you got the right cutter sitting in the right direction. 
Okay, we're going to slide it over top, put it underneath the plunger. We're going to select the um, lock to hold so that it holds hydraulics in the system. Push the little handle on the button, bring it down close, but make sure the plunger is or it will completely crush it and destroy it. That would be really bad. We're going to cut through. It's going to make a huge noise. We're going to pull out the cutter, reposition it for the second cut. Make sure we take the little uh, leftover piece of metal out okay, of the cutter. Bring that plunger back down again. Make sure I've got edge clearance. Okay. Another hole cut. Go back, select the um, hydraulic control there to open, and it'll allow the, the pressure to back off and that plunger to come up. So we're going to mark lines in between the two circles, and then what we're going to do is a process called chain drilling. We're going to use like a number number 30, number 40 drill bit, and we're going to drill holes across that those two openings. Uh, and basically, we're going to turn our drill into a saw. And we're going to drill them as close as we possibly can, all the way across. And then when we're finished, you can kind of move your drill on an angle. Uh, don't let the chuck run into your metal. And you can break all those little holes and break that center piece out. Now it's time to do some serious filing. Lock it into your uh, your um, vise with a bucking bar to support so it doesn't make a lot of noise. We're going to clean that one. And then once I've cleaned the one side, I'm going to go back with a small bucking bar, support it, and file that down. Now we're actually able to use our deburring tool because this is really what it's for. It's for holes like this on the inside. And so we can use this now to deburr or soften the edge on our repair hole. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a, uh, a filler to go in that hole. We've got to make sure grain matches the base material, as we always would. Uh, we're going to hold it underneath and then mark it through on top. And now we can actually take that to the shear. We can cut the full length and cut the little edges and then finish it up with a file so that that piece fits perfectly inside. We're going to make a doubler for the other side. You can see the doubler on the outside. We're going to figure out our pitch for our rivets. There's a selected number of rivets that are going to go in that hole and we've got to make them evenly distanced. There's some additional holes we've got to put in for our bracket and we're going to put a hinge in. Notice how the hinge is installed on the inside. We're going to drill holes for both the metal and the composite lid and finally we're going to put in a anchor nut. When we get the hinge, we're going to cut it with the high-speed die grinder and the, the ceramic cutting tool, being super careful. Notice I had both my glasses on, my uh, safety glasses, and the full mask. There it is, safety first, because those pieces of metal can go crazy. Uh, last thing we're going to do is we're going to put in an anchor nut. So we're going to figure out where we want the center of that anchor nut to be, pilot drill it, bring it up with a number 10, and make sure that when you drill it number 10, that it's going to be big enough to fit our um, this special tool that we have. It's a jig for putting in an anchor nut. Notice how it's got a little pin on one side and not one on the other. We drill the first hole, flip it over, lock the pins in, drill the second hole. We've got a perfectly laid out anchor nut hole. We're going to put some uh, special fasteners, actually just some pop rivets in there. And so we want to um, countersink the top surface. And I'm just doing this by hand because they're uh, uh, kind of a weird profile. We don't really need to go through the whole process of setting up a, a micro stop. So I'm doing it by hand until they fit nice and flush. I'm going to get my anchor nut. I'm going to put it into the box. This is a good time to peel all your plastic off. Put it in the box, lock it in position with one Clico. Okay, and line it up. Put the uh, pop rivet in, and then we're going to use squeezers. We're going to squeeze, push and squeeze, push and squeeze until it pops out. Once it's properly set, we're going to put the other uh, pop rivet in. And when you get to that stage, we're going to put our initials in the bottom left-hand corner. And there it is, our P6 box that we will be adding composite to when we get into composite week. So this is our next project. It's uh, a lot of fun, a bit of a challenge. There we go.